gotta excuse me. We're playing with some new toys tonight, so get the spoons figured out. Brown in the glass. You know what? No. I, I ain't Watch the game. Me. That's what's happening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yo, yo, yo. What up, what up, what up? Hey, I ain't even got no, nothing brown in the glass. I ain't even got nothing. I ain't got no water. I'm still, I'm still off a half from Saturday, so I'm, I'm good. I don't need nothing. You drunk all your brown on Saturday. You got nothing left, huh? Hey, man, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm still floating. All right, we go. We 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 gonna uh, tonight. We gonna we gonna start this thing off a little different, since you're on a, such a big high. You know, after the Wolverines were able to knock off the Buckeyes on Saturday morning, well into Saturday, Saturday afternoon, they got the job done. Uh, just, just I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna give you the floor. How does it feel? Uh. You know what? I ain't had this feeling in about eight years, so I don't even know. It's still foreign to me. Like, I keep, you know, looking at my social media feeds, all the Michigan people I follow, everybody, you know, celebrating still. They going crazy. But it's important that we don't celebrate too long because we do got another game coming up on this Saturday for the Big Ten Championship. Like, I don't want, you know, the fans, the fan base to come out flat. Uh, but just going back to Saturday, it was almost like I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Like, I had to see that clock say all zeros in the end before I believed that we won that game. So uh, after after we did win the game, you know, I went to high school. I graduated high school in Ohio. So uh, it was a lot of, of my uh, high school classmates that I had to uh, make sure I trolled appropriately for the past eight years. So um, it, it, it feels good though, man. I feel real good. You see what I'm saying? I'm still rocking my Michigan gear. I, I'm, li I'm living on the cloud now, right now. Yeah, and stand in the spirit of the blue victory. Uh, we kind of previewed this game and I felt like a few things had to happen. I felt like Carm had to come and make some plays. He was able to make couple plays. Actually, he, he didn't do too bad. He was, uh, he had six rushes for 87 yards, averaging 14.5 a carry. He had a big 55 yard uh, rush from scrimmage. I felt like Michigan needed at least three guys to show up on the offense. And my boy AJ Henney got it going early, man, on the, on the end around. AJ yeah. Henney. For his his only uh, rushing attempt for 14 yards into the touch in, into the end zone. Hey, pay dirt. He hit pay dirt. He set the tone, and yeah, I think it was it was evident with you know the play call and, and just the mindset that they was there to win that game, and they wouldn't you know they was taking it straight to Ohio State. It was no fear. It was no you know we didn't lost the eight years. What's you know what's gonna go wrong for us today? They took it straight to them. The game plan, like we we outlined last week, keep everything in front of you. You know, make them execute all the way down the field. I don't know if you noticed, know but they Ohio State had the ball way more than Michigan did. They had way more total yards than we did, but we did what we needed to do. We kept stuff in front of us, and when we got in the red zone, we tightened that thing down, and you know we took advantage of our opportunities. We didn't get no turnovers on defense. But, you know, uh, Aiden Hutchinson with three sacks. Ajabo came up with a sack. You know, everything was contested. Tackling was well. Matter of fact, the Bears could take a they, – they should take note of the tackling that happened on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. We can't go without mentioning Hassan Haskins. 28 carries, 169 yards, five touchdowns. You walked away from this victory thinking – and maybe he should even be thrown in the Heisman race. Um, me personally, I think that coming up against Iowa, he probably don't have to score five touchdowns, but he has to have a strong, he has to finish strong in the Big Ten Championship. I think that if, that if he has at least two touchdowns, at least over 120 yards rushing, you will, he will be in New York. I'm not going to necessarily say he's going to win the Heisman. But I think he will get invited to New York because his team will be in the national championship hunt and he'll be the bell cow running back 
on a on a team that's in the, in the national playoff in the BCS playoff championship and, series. And, and that's what I was going on. I mean, if we gonna give if we gonna put Kenneth Walker, who had the big game versus Michigan, five touchdowns, uh, they end up beating Michigan 37-33. If he got Heisman consideration and he was a candidate, then we at least got to make the same argument. Uh, again, not saying he gonna win it, but I think it's fair to give him consideration for the Heisman, especially when there's no clear cut front runner this year. Um, you know, we had the kid from Ole Miss, they, the quarterback, they, they was talking about him for the Heisman. They was talking about uh, uh, Spencer, Spencer Ratliff at the beginning of the year. We said he was reading his press clippings and he ain't do nothing on the field. Uh, Kenneth Walker, uh, it went down to C.J. Stroud, where well, he's pretty much out of contention now after the you know Ohio State loss. So I mean, he's got to be at least mentioned. Now, if, if he win it, that's a different story. I don't think so, but he should be at least mentioned for the award. Now, when you say this, you're talking about offensive players, but I also brought up that there hasn't been really one offensive player to just kind of take this thing and run with it. I mean, you got some of the, okay, Georgia's number one. I mean, I, I, I think uh, Alabama's quarterback. Uh, Bryce Young, yeah. Uh, might be in the running. But I think in the case of Michigan, if they could get into the championship, into the into the playoff, I want to think that Aiden Hutchinson might have a chance to be invited as well. It just depends on how they watch the entire season statistically and how they really watch the game. I think he may be worth getting an invite as well, but Michigan has to win. They got to get the job done and beat Iowa in the Big Ten Championship. I don't think he was expecting this coming into the beginning of the season. Always hopeful. And uh, after the Michigan State loss, I mean, things yeah. are pretty, pretty doomed because you didn't know if you really matched up well with Ohio State. And Ohio State have been playing good, pretty good football the last two weeks leading up to this game. As you say, C.J. Stroud, he had a pretty good, he had a pretty good game. Uh, st statistically, he was uh, thir 34 for 49, 349 yards, two touchdowns. Travion Henderson uh, rushed for 17 carries for 74 yards. Um, some way, somehow, they had a ton of penalties, though. And I don't know if I'm looking at it correctly. You may you may be able to correct me, but it's looking at rushing it. I got them down for like 64 yards total rush. It don't sound right. I mean, and if that's the case, that's pretty much what, what the defense won the football game. Because you say uh, Michigan didn't cause any turnovers, but they, for the most part, they, they, they held a run game in check. Um, C.J. Stroud had a pretty good game passing, but he was playing from behind most of the day. Yeah. So that's why he had to kind of get those, get the numbers to have them, uh, you know, an inflated uh, stat, stat sheet here. Uh, 34 completion, 49 attempts, 394 yards, two touchdowns. I think it was uh, Garrett Wilson had a touchdown. You had Jackson Smith. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Jackson Smith for Ohio State receiver. He had uh he had eleven receptions for 127 yards. Huh? It's a pretty big get pretty big day. I could be wrong, but that's uh, yeah, they, they I mean they, they, they moved, came to play get the job done. Right. They they moved the ball. They had yardage. I mean, if you're just looking at individual stats, if you don't even look at the score, you would think Ohio State won the game. Again, they controlled the ball longer. Uh they had more yardage. Uh, the penalties killed them. Uh, this was one of the first times in a long time where the penalties was in Michigan's favor and not going against us. So, I mean, if you just look at it, like look at the stat sheet, you think Ohio State won that game. But when they got into the red zone, Michigan, did, they did enough to keep Ohio State at bay. And when they had the ball, they scored touchdowns and not field goals. That, that, was, that was the difference. That's the key. That was the key. And I think that Harbaugh, as much I didn't want to see McCarthy play, I really didn't want to see him at all, but he got him in the game. He didn't hurt the team. 
I mean, he had a big run. He had a big run on a uh, read option play, but uh-huh. he kept it in, in the first down. He even completed a pass. Yeah. Um, and, and, but I felt like after McNamara threw the first interception, Harbaugh decided to just run the football. It don't matter how you get in the end zone, just get in the damn end zone. And when you talk about the Bears, that's one thing they can take from this Michigan game plan because once uh, Magnamera threw that first pick, you know, he was trying to, you know, kind of, you know, feeling himself, trying to, you know, blow Ohio State out the water. You know, you, you, you have to score points to beat this team, but there's more than one, one way to do it. And they, they, they were able to uh, rush the football and just continue to, you know, pile up the yards on the ground. They didn't force it in the passing game. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was. What we was talking after the game on Saturday, and I said I changed my statement about when we went to the actual Michigan and Washington game, where Michigan ran the ball the entire game. That was one of the best Michigan games I went to in retrospect now because they was laying the foundation and, and the groundwork for how they was going to beat Ohio State. And I told, I told them twelve. I said, 12, listen, maybe Harbaugh is coaching to what the strength of his team is versus, you know, how we want it to look. And at the end of the day, I'm sure he would agree with you. It don't matter how we got that W. We beat Ohio State on Saturday, and that's all that matters. And the fans were just elated. I want to believe it took them about two hours <laughs> to clear the stadium that day because uh, – no one looked like they were in a hurry to get out of there. They were just having a good time out there in Ann Arbor. And I'm willing to bet, you know, we were talking about it, that I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't have any public schools. And I believe I, w- I would like to believe their classrooms were probably scheduled, uh, were probably canceled on Monday and Tuesday. I mean, after they have, they hadn't beaten this team since, what, 2011? Yeah, yeah. That's a long time, and, and you made a mention that it's it's not a rivalry unless Michigan get another win next year. Oh yeah, that's that's. That, I mean, I'm getting greedy now. Now I know I got, as we say, we got meat on the bone still for this season, but I want to go to Columbus next year and stick it to them again because now you got now the Ohio State fan base. They got some questions that they need to answer about you know, their team and their philosophy. I'm tired of dealing with all that kind of stuff. Let them deal with it. Now, you, they, didn't, they didn't play the game at all last year. No. Uh-uh. And as, as we were watching the game, I felt like that when they didn't play the game last year, that, 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 that this game in particular on Saturday had a lot of guys inexperienced in the game. The game with Michigan versus Ohio State. I felt like it was a lot of guys new to the rivalry, and I think that kind of maybe reset the playing field because you got guys that's new to the rivalry. Both, I think, both quarterbacks were had were inexperienced in this game, particular mm-hmm. as far as Ohio State Michigan matchups. I think you had two quarterbacks came in playing their first game, and. Michigan was just determined, man. I think they just wanted it more from a discipline standpoint, the offensive line. It didn't matter where the, the back was trying to run, right, left. It didn't matter. Um, Hassan Haskins got a lot of props for that game, but I mean, you could you could you could credit seven to eight guys. Those five guys up front and those three guys that got it done on the ground at any given time. But Hassan had a great game. He carried the load. We, you, Michigan had at least three or four guys have an impact on the game. Hutchinson, like you said, on defensive end with his three sacks. And uh, Ojobu, is that his name? Am yeah, I pronouncing that right? Yep, yep. Ojobu, yep. Okay. Um, now, looking forward to Saturday. The Wolverines got Iowa Hawkeyes. We don't want to look past them. They were able to beat, uh, I think they beat, was it Wisconsin? No, they beat Minnesota, right? right. Who did they beat? No, uh, Minnesota beat Wisconsin. Iowa beat Nebraska on Friday. Yeah, Nebraska, yeah, all that red, man. I, I get it mixed up. But they were able to beat Nebraska. Nebraska's been playing tough all season. They just ain't been able to get the job done. I want to point out one guy. 
that plays for the Iowa Hawkeyes in your program. His name is his, his number is number twenty seven. Uh, uh, cornerback for the Hawkeyes, Jamari Harris, mm -hmm. number twenty seven. So I believe he's a sophomore. This was a kid I had the privilege of coaching in middle school for a couple years. He played on my middle school basketball team. But that's neither here nor there. I mean, you know, I just wanted to, you know, drop some hey, names. We, we shout him out. We shout him out. He on the wrong team this week, but we still shout him out, though. <laughs> yeah, he was able to. He actually uh, closed the deal against Nebraska, and he, he had the uh, – Nebraska was driving mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the game. Picked him off to close the deal, put his team in the Big Ten Championship. So, uh, Saturday, I mean, it's hard to believe that you got the Big Ten Championship. I don't know how, how long this championship game has been established. This is the first time that we've been able to see Michigan Wolverines and I think maybe even the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah. I don't know if one of them, two teams is new to this championship game. And on top of that, and I hope we don't want this to end on our watch, the, the Big Ten West has never won this game. It's always the Big Ten East that wins this game. So let's not have this start on Michigan's watch. Because that kind of totally undoes everything you just did last week. So we just got to go and take care of business and then get in the college football playoff and then let, let's see where the chips fall at that point. I learned a few things. I learned a few things on Saturday that afternoon also. I did not know uh, Illinois played Penn State back in October. And they went uh -huh. nine overtimes. And I think the score was like 20 to 18 or something like that. Yeah, it was okay? no scoring for that many overtimes. <laughs> the reason why I say I learned something is because I didn't know that after the first two overtimes, Everything else is like just two point conversion. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, how in the hell did they go nine overtimes and win the game only scoring 20 points? Yeah. But I learned that because uh, stepping out of the Big Ten a little bit, the Iron Bowl with Alabama and Auburn, it was a classic matchup. Auburn always come to play. I think Auburn was barely, they were struggling at. Struggling, I think they were maybe below 500 or just above 500. But anytime Alabama and Auburn hit the field, it's a grudge match, and that's what it was on Saturday afternoon. Now, the reason why I say this, they went four overtimes, and this is when I was able to realize that they were only going with two point conversions in that game after the second overtime. I think Alabama ended up winning that game 24 to 22. I learned a lot, yep. man, watching that. Uh, and then uh, later on, I learned something in the Bears game as well that I'll be able to talk about a little later. But congratulations. You got the win. More meat on the bone. Got the Hawkeyes coming up on Saturday in the Big Ten Championship. I will be able to make that and kick it with y'all. Go blue. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, looking forward to that. But seems like all the action for us was in the state of Michigan. Because a few days before that, on Thanksgiving, our Bears went up there Thanksgiving morning and squeaked out a victory against the Detroit Lions. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to the Tampa boys. They made the game. I wasn't able to get up with them. I think right now they, they might be caught up in the Bulls game right now as we doing this. You know, the Bulls are hooping right now. They got the ball boys matching up at the United Center. Yeah. So they, they, they kicking it. They didn't send me a couple of messages. You know, we always text messages during the Bulls game, during the Bears game. But shout out again to the uh, to the Taylor Made boys. They made the trip up to Ford Field and, uh, to and watched out. My boy Spencer, he was at. He went. He made the trip up there to Ford Field too. So he went. So shout out my boy Spencer Bishop. What's happening, boy? I, I see you. I seen the pictures. Hey, wish we could have been there, but at least you made the trip and the Bears got the W. Yeah, it seems like that's always a trip Bear fans get a chance to make. Um, I don't think it was a sellout, but Bear fans from our, uh, Northwest Indiana and Chicago, they get a chance to make that trip quite often because the, the TaylorMade boys, they, they've been going the past three years, I believe. Yeah. I was able, they wanted me to go, but I kind of chose not to for 
reasons I would not discuss right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 but, yeah. But I mean, getting into to the Bears game, I mean, I got my thoughts. I, I'm interested to hear what you think because I, 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 I don't, I don't like how that game was played. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna let you get get your thoughts out first, but I, I get into it later. So I'm, I'm gonna give you the floor. Okay, it was good. You, okay, first of all, everybody know Justin Fields is injured, so he was out. I mean, it's been confirmed that he had broken ribs. I mean, his return has not been uh, decided just yet. So I'm going to assume that Andy Dalton will be playing against the Cardinals coming up uh, on the next Sunday. But with Justin being out, I was able to you know, beginning of the season when the Bears played the Rams, I really didn't like the fact that they were taking Andy Dalton out, putting Justin in, giving him play. Because I just wanted to see him go with one quarterback, let that guy get a, get a rhythm, and let him play the game, let him ride that game plan out with that one guy. Sort of like what Michigan is doing with their two-quarterback system, but that's college and this is the NFL. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, I was looking forward to this because even though Justin Fields didn't play, I was still looking forward to see how the offense would look with Andy Dalton with a total commitment to Andy Dalton playing the position for the for, for the entire game. Okay. Of course, Nick Foles would have been his backup, but it was nice to see Andy Dalton's game plan because I believe we can both agree that that's two different type of quarterbacks. Yeah. Andy right. Dalton and Justin Fields. So you know they got to have two different styles of offense. Um, So Andy Dalton went out. He got off to a pretty fast start. You know what I'm saying? And um, matter of fact, well, the Bears fell down seven to nothing. Yep. From the jump, Artie Burns, Artie Burns replaced Kendall Vildor at corner, and he got burned for the first touchdown to go down seven to nothing. Yeah. But to get back. To get back to the offense with Andy Dalton, I was really concerned about how much they were running the football. And you, I got to give you some credit, you you thought that the Bears would be pass happy, which they were. At halftime, Andy Dalton had threw the ball 26 times. Okay? So they were on pace to throw the ball 50 times. You know, in this game, he did have a touchdown pass to uh, uh, Graham, Jimmy Graham. It was nice to see him uh, affect the game. Cole Commit played one of his better games of the season. Um, let me see what I got here. Cole Commit ended up with eight eight receptions for sixty five yards. Uh, Darnell Moody, he continued to get better without uh, Allen Robinson on the field. Right. Down there, Mooney, five receptions for 123. We even had Damian Bird get involved. He had a big catch down the stretch to kind of uh, lead them to the field goal to win the game. Um, but it was just good to see a few few other guys get involved. Not a lot of points, of, of, of course. Not a lot of points. The MVP of this game was, again, Cairo Santos. Always. Uh, yeah. Three for four. Uh, field goal attempts. He was uh, responsible for 10 of those 16 points. So before I go rambling and won't, won't mention his name, got to make sure that he gets his props. Cairo Santos, once again, getting it done at the end of the game. Right. Um, so the thing that touched me, okay, they didn't run the ball particularly well. And what I'm starting to figure out is since David Montgomery came back, they haven't run the ball. They haven't run the ball particularly well. Um, I even go back to the Khalil Herbert injury. When he went, when Khalil Herbert got injured, the running game has not looked the same to me. So I'm, I'm even going back that far. But well, the thing with Khalil Herbert, you made you've been making that statement for a couple of weeks. But I think it's not so much what he's not doing. Um, I think. Once again, this coaching staff lacks the ability to make adjustments. 
And even that even goes with the running game. I think it's the lack of adjustments. They're not making the adjustments in the running game. Now, as far as Khalil Herbert is concerned, that's how I feel. But as far as David Montgomery is concerned, I don't think he's always following the point of attack. Mm-hmm. He's dancing a little bit more. He's not He's not hitting the hole. Do I've had, I found that right now. See the difference. You Go ahead. Do you think Montgomery is 100% healthy? If he's on the field, man, if you're on the field, you, if you're playing, you're playing. Now, I mean, hell, I think he's healthy. I just think, I just think he's not, I just think he's not attacking the point of attack. I think he's uh, he's trying to do a little bit too much. Uh, from time to time, he has tiptoed to the hole. But with Herbert, you can see he just hits the hole. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he gets stonewalled, but he at least just hits the hole. So I really would like to see them going forward, split those carries up. Uh, because David Montgomery hasn't been that much better than Herbert were, was before before, you know, they he came back. Herbert was doing a hell of a job. Right. Um, 50-50 is how I see it. I mean, um, able to get on the passing game a little bit. I mean, they, but, they, between the two of them, they had 21 carries. David Montgomery had 17. Khalil Herbert had four. I mean, both of them, I think that's under three yards a, a clip for both of them. I think uh, Montgomery was like 2.7 and Khalil Herbert was like 2.2. That's not going to get it done, especially when that should be the focal point and the strength of your team. So the reason I'm saying I'm, I'm looking at this game and I can see it two different ways, like, okay, I told you last week Matt Nagy was going to come out and be pass happy because he wanted to go with Andy Dalton until he got ready to put Justin Fields in there in the first place. But the reports that came out this week, management came down and said, hey, play Justin from week five going forward. Okay, cool. But with Andy in there, it was past that. He threw the ball 39 times. Now, him throwing the ball 39 times, we got to see some of the potential weapons that we can have in the future. We got to see them. We got to see Mooney take another step forward, you know, maybe possibly being the number one guy, especially with Allen Robinson contract situation coming up this offseason. We got to see Cole Komet get some grabs. He, when you just said he had eight catches. We saw, uh, what's the name? Demir Bird, number 10, Bird. We saw him get some big catches. We saw uh, uh, Grant out of the backfield, some screen pass that we've been, you know, some uh, swing passes that we've been harking them for, for since maybe like week three or four. So we got to see some of our skill players touch the ball. I'm like, okay, you know, we can work with this going forward. But on the flip side of that, now we got the Cardinals coming in to Soldier Field on Sunday. Weather is not going to be favorable. Matt Nagy, because he had some quote unquote success throwing the ball, again, they only put 16 points on the board, but he had success throwing the ball, and that's the way kind of he, I think he envisions this team. That's going to cost us on Sunday. And I, I'm almost willing to say guarantee we're going to lose the game because the play calling is going to be heavy on the pass again and, you know, not leaning on what you got. And you got two very good serviceable backs, serviceable backs in Montgomery and Khalil Herbert. Pound the damn ball. It's going to be bad weather. Pound the ball. Down. Arizona, they, ain't trying to, they ain't trying to be in that. They're not trying to be in bad weather on the lakefront. They not. They just trying to come here. Hey, let's play. Let's get our check and let's let's get back to Arizona. But Matt Nagy is gonna blow this game because of the quote unquote success that he had in the passing game last week. Um, interesting you say that. Now we can focus on the Cardinals a little bit. Um, McCoy, I think has been playing quarterback for them the past few weeks. I think. Uh, Kyler Murray's been out for two weeks, three weeks, three weeks, or three. something like that. They'll be coming off a bye. So they, they should be coming off a bye pretty healthy. Maybe Kyler Murray comes back and play in this game. One thing, though, with this with this team, with the Cardinals, they score a lot of points. The defense causes turnovers. Pretty good defense. And you always got A.J. Green 
Angel and Hopkins. Hopkins, yep. Yeah, and I think uh, I forget the tailback's name. I think his name Connor. is Edmonds. No, you talking about Connor? Connor? Yeah, Connor. It's a solid football team. I think they got the best. They got the best record in NFC, right? No, the Packers. The Packers eight and three, nine and three. I think. I believe out of all of the teams that's set to make the playoffs right now, this is the one team that the Bears have the best chance to win. Only because Kyler Murray hasn't been on the field for a few weeks. And I think it may take him a little while to get the rhythm, but the Bears got to be able to take advantage of it if it happens. Now, we watched them play against Baltimore, and they didn't take advantage of that. Um, with 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 uh, Lamar Jackson being out and, and lost that game right at the end, I believe that the, the Cardinals going to come out early, and that's when the Bears are going to have their opportunities to either compete or win this game. I, I'm going to continue to stay with the formula: three touchdowns, two turnovers. You most definitely going to need that against yeah. the Cardinals. Now we we are sure about. McCoy or Kyler Murray playing uh, quarterback for him. Um, with that on that defense, um, they had an injury, key injury to uh, JJ. Is JJ what? I think he out for the rest of the year. If I'm, if yeah, I'm and that's what I'm saying. That was a big loss to that defense. Yeah, but yet still, that defense causes turnovers and. They put that offense in position to score points. They shorten the field, take the ball away. Fans can't make mistakes. Like you say again, man, Nagy might be pass happy. This team will ball haul. They do, they do cause fumbles and they do intercept the football. So would you like would you like to see if let's say Justin Fields is healthy? Which I doubt. But let's say he's healthy. Who'd you rather see, Justin Fields or Andy, right now? If, if, if Justin is one hundred percent healthy, obviously I want I want to see Justin out there. But given the situation, put it like this: I think if Justin is in the game, I think there's more of a tendency to kind of lean on the actual strength of the team, which is running the football. You know, to protect the rookie quarterback. But with Andy in there, you know, Nagy thinking, you know, I, I got a, 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 a quarterback that's been to the Pro Bowl. He's been to the playoffs. You know, he, he's he got a resume, and I can I can implement what I want to do and put my identity on the team, and that's that's what he's going to lean towards doing. But, I mean, let, let's, let's be 100% honest here. Like, the, the game the Bears played on Thanksgiving versus the Lions, that gets you beat on Sunday. Because the Lions, oh, hell yeah. and, and, and all actuality, the Lions should have beat us. But they shot themselves in the foot two times when they was in, you know, about to be in scoring position. They got some penalties and they, and they was facing like some third and 32s. They took them way out of even field goal range. They lost the game by two points. So I don't I don't necessarily think the Bears won on Thursday more, more so than it was the Lions lost the game. So if the Bears come in with that game, that, that gets you beat by at least 10 on, on Sunday. Yeah. Right. And I, in a bad weather game. 16, yeah. 16 points will, will definitely not beat the Cardinals. Now, now that brings me to something. You're talking about uh, penalties and clock management. And the Lions were horrible. But a ton, they kind of like Ohio State. A ton of offensive penalties, holding, false start. But the thing I learned, remember I told you I was going to point this out. I learned something new watching this game as well. The Lions called one timeout in the fourth quarter. Called a timeout. Got back on the field over there. I, think, I believe they were on defense. Mm -hmm. Offense. I'm not sure. But they went out, they called a timeout. Okay, they come out of the timeout. Ball is set. They called another timeout. I did not know that that was a penalty. Yeah, you can't do to that. Call. 
you can't call a timeout right after. You can't call two back to back timeout. Right. I learned. I didn't know that was a penalty uh, until Sunday. I mean, until Thursday, Thanksgiving. I did not know that, so I learned something new about the college football overtime, and I learned something new about just calling back to back timeouts in, in, in the NFL because in the, NFL, in the NBA, it happens all the time. <laughs> And even in, in the college football game, uh, I seen uh, Michigan State do this to Rutgers earlier in the year. Or, or I think it was Rutgers did it to Michigan State. They had three timeouts right before the half, and the field goal kick was about to kick a field goal. They burned all three of them back to back to back. No penalty, and the kicker ended up missing the field goal. So you can do that in college. Can't do that in the pros. Oh, hey, they got to keep the action going, I guess. They say, let's keep it moving. Yeah. But I learned, that's one thing I learned um, a Thursday, Thanksgiving, watching that game. So, like I said, just a ton of mistakes. The Bears wouldn't have beat a good team. 16 points is not enough to beat a good team. I think they put up 16 against, what they lose, 16, 13 to the, what was the score against the Baltimore Ravens? Kind of a similar score. Uh, to the Ravens, it was 16-13. Yeah, so, I mean, you kind of come out and damn near put out the same offensive production. The defense played particularly well with the help of the uh, with the the help of the Detroit Lions offense. Um, penalty, you know, getting penalty after penalty after penalty. Um, to close it out, two things, because we touched on it last week. When we sat down and we watched the Michigan-Ohio State game, and I made a joke, I said, when, when did Coach goes to Chicago? If you remember when I said this, I see a lot of people but, saying losing coach goes to, to Chicago, but keep going. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, after Michigan won, uh, like I said, we said before that we found out that maybe the, the, the McCaskies were Michigan fans, so they got two victories, two big victories this weekend, if, if that's the case. Uh, but when you talk about John, I mean, Jim Harbaugh and Ryan Day, um, I didn't know Ryan Day had that much experience in the NFL. I think he coached with the, with the Eagles and maybe the 49ers, I believe. He mm-hmm. coached under all the staff. I didn't know he had that much experience in the NFL. But... I think it's still, the writing is still on the wall for Matt Nagy right now. What it would take for him to kind of fight back in the graces of the good graces of his fan base and keep this job. I mean, it would, it would take an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, so when you look at that, you're talking about all these so-called coaching candidates. And I'm just going to focus in on those two guys because they were getting some talk going into the weekend. Jim Harbaugh's done it before. He took a team to the Super Bowl. And three NFC I did, games. Yeah, and I didn't know that I didn't know that he actually had signed an extension with Mich- with the Wolverines last year. Uh, you put me up on game on that. So I think that, I don't know if that kind of takes him out to run it. I mean, but stranger things has happened in professional sports. I think he said he got a 10-year extension in Michigan. No, it wasn't a 10-year for him. They just lowered his buyout. They lowered his base salary. It's, it's very incentive laden going forward. He didn't get 10 years, but uh, the administration, they didn't want to him going into his last year as a lame duck coach without the extension. Uh, so that's why he ended up getting him. They was, they was hoping <laughs> that he landed an NFL job last year. That was what they was trying to set up like you know we didn't fire him he chose to leave but that didn't happen so got an extension and then he brought in the new coaches lo and behold they beat Ohio State they in the Big Ten Championship game so I think he's firmly entrenched there for at least the next five years um Ryan Day coming to the Bears makes sense I mean Justin Fields was at Ohio State um I'm not sure if that's not Matt Nagy part two, to be 100% honest with you. Ryan Day has had a lot of success at Ohio State, but he's standing on the shoulders of what Jim Trestle and Urban Meyer built and 
uh, Jim Harbaugh had a quote the other day. He's like, people standing on third base and they think they hit a triple. And that ain't the case. So he might be Matt Nagy too. He, again, he's very pass centric. He's very heavy on the pass. He has to be told to run the ball too. So I don't necessarily think he's the right guy, but it makes sense when you're looking at Justin played at Ohio State, Ohio State, Ryan Day. Let's keep that relationship and foster that, and hopefully we can build something here in Chicago. I get it. I just I'm not on board for the Ryan Day hire. Now I think you took a lot of words out of my mouth, and you touched on some things that I want to touch on because the comment that. Uh, Jim Harbaugh made. I was going to bring that up, so you did that. Um, the fact that with Ryan Day, I don't want to see a guy come in here just to coach or just because he has a relationship with Justin Fields. I'm a 53-man guy. You got 53 guys in the practice squad to coach. I don't know who this guy is. But I, if Matt Nagy's not going to be the coach in Chicago, I want a guy that's going to hold guys accountable, you know, uh, throughout the roster. And I think with that being said, the, the, the accountability is just enough. Because when you're being held accountable, I mean, some some reason it just has better results. I keep bringing up Bill Belichick. Yep. I mean, just, I mean, just... You just give him a good signal call, and he'll take care of the rest. And I yeah. think he's proven that with uh, with with Mac uh, Mac Jones. They run the hell out the football. I think later on, somewhere down the line, we're gonna take a better look at the rookie quarterbacks from this draft and uh, kind of throw Justin in that mix and kind of see who's panned out and where they are. We can do that further on down the line. I won't get too far into that tonight. But when you talk about any coaching changes with the Chicago Bears, I want a guy that's going to hold guys accountable. And I, I don't know if I want a, 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 the, the hot assistant right now. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's what we want. But no matter what, that's those are our Bears. I think I'm going to be able to root on whoever. Whoever they pick up. I just don't want that guy that's just gonna be the hot assistant. So don't just go out and get a guy because he just he got this great relationship with Justin Fields. I mean it's a lot of questions to be answered. But that's neither here nor there. We're gonna wrap this up tonight, unless you got something else you want to bring up. But yeah, we I got mean, two games. It's this big week. I mean, I, I got the Bulls on off to my left uh, right now. Uh, the Heat playing uh, the Denver Nuggets tonight. Again, uh, this is a conference championship week uh, for, for college football. So excited about that. You know, we'll be we'll be out at uh, 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 three, the Shortwood Studios. We'll be out there um, watching the game. So uh, I'm just I'm just looking forward. Again, best time of the year. Uh, I know we very uh, football centric on the show right now. But once football season, especially college football, dies down and, and the NFL playoffs kind of, you know, we know who's going to be in the Super Bowl stuff. We'll start talking about some basketball things. We got some great topics lined up for that. So uh, we appreciate y'all being here with us. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please comment. We want to make this thing interactive and grow. Uh, shout out to, you know, Cutter Pack Man. Uh, shout out to, like I said, my boy Spence. Shout out to Juice Box, who is, uh, I guess, the in-studio audience tonight. Uh, and just, you know, watch the game podcast, man. Just support what we're doing. Like, we just, we just love talking sports, and we want to grow this thing and get this to more people. All right, you can wrap this up, man. We playing with some new toys around here. We're going to try some new things. We talked about some stuff behind the scenes that we're going to be trying to do to get this thing off, with, off and running to reach more people but for those of you that have supported us up to this point and, and reaching out to us and letting us know that you're kind of looking forward to us doing this it kind of holds us accountable so that we can make sure we are uh, delivering to you guys thank you for supporting us up to this point we got some new toys to play with we got a lot of ideas we want to you know do that so watch the game podcast 
I'll see you on Saturday, I believe. Saturday. Go Big Ten Championship. Peace out. Watch the game podcast, baby.